Hi everyone, welcome to A Stitch in Time. Today is wet, no it's Thursday. It's August 10th, 2023 and this is episode 263. I'm Carol, also known as Knits and Pearls on Ravelry and I live east of Vancouver in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, Canada. I hope you're all well. It's been a while, uh, about three weeks to be exact. I had hoped to record last week, it just didn't happen, but here I am with lots and lots of things to show you. I guess that's one upside of letting so much time go by between episodes. Uh, if you have not done so already, you might want to grab something to drink and maybe a project to work on and settle in for the long haul because I think it's going to be a long one. Of course, you can also watch it in small bits, which is something I often find myself doing with my favorite uh, podcasts. I'm going to have a sip of tea right away. I feel a little catch in my throat. Uh, before I do get into uh, all of the projects, um, I just want to send my best wishes to those people who have been impacted by the uh, wildfires in Hawaii. What a terrible, tragic situation that is. And my heart goes out to everyone who's lost their home or their loved ones or both. It's just been an awful year for wildfires in general. I know here in Canada, we've lost uh, three firefighters uh, so far in the line of duty. And uh, in my province of British Columbia, it has been our worst wildfire season ever. And it's not over yet. Uh, so yes, best wishes to everyone who's been impacted in one way or another. Uh, on a happier note, I have some prize winners to announce for the make-alongs that are taking place in the A Stitch in Time podcast Ravelry, Ravelry group. So first up for the um, Another Year of Stash, which is a year-long chatter thread, I have uh, taken the post numbers for the July chatter, which are 951 to 1090. Random number generator chose post 983, that is L-E-B or L-E-B-Y or L-E-B-Y, not sure how you pronounce your Ravelry name, but it's Ellie, not sure where Ellie's from, it's not on her profile page, but congratulations to you Ellie and thank you for taking part in the make along. Um, for the monthly Yarn of the Month Club uh, make-along, I have the winners for June. There were 12 finished projects. Random number generator chose number three, and that is Curious Purple Pig, who is Rhonda from the United States. So congratulations to you, Rhonda. Both winners have won uh, up to $20 US in patterns that are giftable on Ravelry. So please send me a private message on Ravelry with the patterns that you would like and I will get those into your inbox as soon as possible. Thanks to everyone who has taken part uh, thus far and congratulations to this month's winners. Just a quick word about the Yarn of the Month Club. Please make sure that you post a separate post for your cast on or beginnings and your end. Um, the way I keep track is as I go through the thread and when I, uh, when I go through the thread, when I see a finished project, I favorite it and I tag it for that month. And then at the, um, when it comes time to choose prizes, I just take a really quick look back through the thread, make sure I've gotten all the finished projects. And if your finished project is on your starting page, it may get missed. I almost missed one this month. So please do, just to make it much easier for me to uh, keep track, um, make sure you do separate posts. Um, if you you know, if you fulfill the requirements, I want everyone to um, have an equal chance of winning. I don't want to miss you. 
All right, let's get on with the crafting, shall we? Before I show you what I've been working on, just a quick word about what I'm wearing. This is Etta by Allison Green, which is a sweater designed for Barocco using their summer sesame yarn. I finished this, I don't know, a month or six weeks ago or so, and it's not quite so hot today, so I was able to wear it. So there's a quick look. I'm just wearing it today with a pair of denim capris. All right, uh, first up are a couple of finished projects. Um, I finished a couple of pairs of socks. The first are my um, pressed flowers socks, so named because the colorway is named pressed flowers. Very original, I know. Um, this is a 64 stitch top down sock knit on a two millimeter needle. It's a one by one twisted rib cuff a German short row heel and my usual rounded toe. Um, I did the heel with some yarn that I pulled out of my sock yarn leftovers. Uh, it's some Cascade Heritage color 5632, which is dark plum. So why don't I bring that in a little bit closer. You can get a better look at the colorway. So I had originally cast on this yarn for a different pattern, but once I finished the cuff and got into the stitch pattern, I didn't really like it in this yarn. So I decided to just save the uh, cuff and then just do a stockinette sock. I think it um, this yarn just looked better that way. So yeah, happy with um, how they turned out. I had some car knitting time and so I was able to finish them off but in a week or two ago. Um, it's kind of funny this is the first sock I knit and you can see how the yarn pooled a little bit differently on sock number two uh, which seems to happen you know fairly often with hand painted yarns but they're definitely a pair and I look forward to wearing them. Um, another pair of socks I have are my Seed Pod Socks by Helen Stewart. These are knit from Dream in Color Smooshy in the Chinatown Apple colorway. And I did the medium size. Um, I think I knit the leg longer than the pattern suggests, but I like about a seven to eight inch leg length before I do the heel, depending on which kind of heel I do. Uh, if I'd say, a uh, traditional heel flap and gusset like this one, I'll knit seven inches. If it's a short row heel, I'll knit eight. So I'm quite happy with how this pattern knit up in this yarn. I think the yarn defines the stitches really nicely and I like the, just the subtle tonal variations in this yarn. Made it more interesting to knit than just a solid yarn. Uh, just a word about uh, this pattern and others from the Handmade Sock Society. I always assume people know about it, but um, I recently had a comment about the price of this sock pattern. And when you're on Ravelry and you take a quick look, it looks like this pattern is very expensive, but it's actually part of a whole collection. I think this is the fifth time that Helen Stewart has offered the Handmade Sock Society collection. It's a pattern collection of six patterns, which are released over the course of six months, one, one per month. If you get in on it early before the first pattern is released, you get a discounted price. And then once the Sock Society has all been released, once it's all been released, once all six patterns have been released, at some point Helen Stewart makes the patterns available individually. Um, but definitely if you like most of the patterns or some of the patterns, the best deal is to buy them as a collection because if you buy them individually, it's considerably more than buying them all together. So um, I have participated in the Handmade Sock Society every time 
and have lots of lovely socks to show for it. So um, if you're interested in knowing more about it, um, make sure you sign up for the Curious Handmade newsletter. Um, I'm not a sponsor, just a fan. Um, I'm going to guess that you can find it. I think she has a website, CuriousHandmadeMaybe.com. And also you can find her on Ravelry. Um, if I think of it, I'll put a link to her website um, in the show notes, which incidentally can be found uh, down below or on the blog, uh, which is listed below and also in the Ravelry group. Anyway, that's, that's enough about that. These are my two finished projects, two pairs of socks. And now for works in progress. I have lots and lots of new cast-ons. Um, and you will see some in multiple versions because as the name of this episode suggests, I've had a hard time making decisions. Uh, I have been doing a lot of swatching and a lot of beginning and changing my mind. Um, I'm happy to say I think I've now settled on the yarns I want to use for all of these projects, but it's been it's been a process. I would be a lot further along uh, if I hadn't been for all of my um, indecision. Um, analysis paralysis, I think is just the perfect term for that. Not my expression, just one I've picked up. So a example of that is my latest project for the Handmade Sock Society. A new pattern got released last week called the Paper Wing Socks, and they are um, inspired by butterflies. So my first choice would have been to knit this pattern in pale blue. Up at our uh, family property, there are these very beautiful, fairly small butterflies that we see quite frequently, especially I think in the spring. And I went through my stash and I could not find any suitable yarn. But what I see, what butterfly I see most here where I live are what um, are called um, cabbage whites, or a lot of times they get called cabbage moths, but then I've learned that cabbage moths are actually a different thing. So I thought that this pattern would show up nicely on a pale yarn because it's textured. And so I had recently bought this skein uh, from Lillian Pine. Uh, it's the Daylily Sock, which is an 80-20 superwash merino nylon in the Sandy's Beach colorway. And I had bought this with the intention of, of potentially using it as part of a fade for a sweater I want to make. Uh, but there may be some yarn on its way that I'm going to use instead. So I only needed three skeins of my fade set. So I uh, freed this one from that and I cast on this sock in honor of the cabbage whites, which I see frequently in my uh, yard. In fact, uh, before recording, I was um, at the front door talking to our son and daughter-in-law and I saw a whole ton of them today. So this is what I have so far. I'm actually gonna put this on a sock blocker. I think it might stretch the fabric out a little bit so that you can get a better look at that textured pattern. I think that shows it off better. Now I think this is perfectly lovely, but I was looking at some of the 
horizontal lines that come from just the variations in the dye. I'm thinking, ah, oh, I don't know if that's the right yarn for that. And so I pulled out this skein of Regia that I had bought, I don't know, a while ago with the idea that it would probably make a good Helen Stewart sock because it's kind of in her pastel-y uh, range of colorways that she chooses. And so I cast on, okay, where is it now? I cast on a second one out of this Regia four ply. This is color uh, 6840, which is Rosa. And I don't know if you can tell, the yarn is very, very subtle in its color variations. And in fact, if you look on the front, you see that pale blue? <laughs> that would have been perfect, but I didn't own a scale, a skein of pale blue. So I cast on this sock, and once again, I think I'm gonna grab a sock blocker. And it looks just as good in this colorway as I thought it would. You can definitely see how this yarn makes those stitches stand out. So then the decision, because I don't want to knit two pairs of the same sock. And after much deliberation, I've decided to go back to my initial choice and save this yarn for a different pattern. Um, they're both great. I just think I like this one just a little bit more. So that's one pattern that I've been humming and hawing over, or one project. I'll show you uh, a couple more shortly. Um, I've got both pairs of socks in these very summery project bags that I made. Um, I think this one was the very first project bag that I ever made and I had this great ice cream fabric and I picked up the stripes and these zigzags and then um, later on I uh, made that one kind of adapted it to more of how I make my project bags now with the with the contrast on the bottom as opposed to the top gives it a little bit more sturdiness with the interfacing here. Um, okay, so these now that I've decided <laughs> to keep this one, I can get back to work on it. These have been kind of uh, languishing for a few days while I let them uh, kind of percolate. <laughs> let the ideas percolate or decisions, you know what I mean. Okay, now comes the challenge of where I have to put things, find homes for things. Uh, in my maple leaf Canadian bag, I have my caribou fall socks, which is a pattern that I designed. And I am knitting this pair from this gorgeous red yarn from Sweet Fiber. I'm just looking for the tag here. It's part of the uh, yarn club or sock yarn club from last fall. Um, it's the Super Sweet Sock, which is also an 8020 Super Rush Merino Nylon in the color Apple Picking. Uh, that's all blown out and now I've dropped it on the floor. I'm not going to pick it up. Um, so I have this much cast on for my second sock, which means I must have one sock finished. And again, I'll put it onto a sock blocker. Okay. 
I just love this stitch pattern. It has just so much texture and interest. I can't take credit for the stitch pattern. I just worked it out to be able to put it into a pair of socks, but I really, really like this first sock and I uh, can't wait to do the second one. As I explained before, I had knit some sample socks, but I don't own a pair for myself that I actually wear. So I will, and I'll be able to wear them this fall. So very happy with how this pair is turning out. I think it's just a great um, mix of yarn and pattern. So no hesitation on that one. I'm just gonna duck down and pick up that uh, label so I could put it back in here. Otherwise I'm gonna lose it. And I have one more pair of socks to show you because I always like to have a pair of plain stockinette socks on the go. So that uh, red yarn was bag number six from my own personal sock yarn club. Um, I had my husband put 12 skeins of yarn in bags at the beginning of the year and number them. So that was bag number six. And I decided before I cast on a new pair of plain socks that I would open up bag number seven to see if there was something suitable in bag number seven. And there was. And so I currently have number six and seven going. So there was this lovely, lovely skein of Art Feel Bell. Um, it's also an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon base, and this is the colorway Bearing Sea. I had bought this yarn, um, at the Beehive Wool Shop in Victoria. And at the same time, I picked up a mini to go with it. And it's Cape Verde. Or Capo Verde, if you say it in the language. I think it's, I wanna say Portuguese, but I'm not sure. I know this is a, it's in the Atlantic. <laughs> Anyway, I thought those two went together really well. So I will be using this for um, complimentary heels for sure, maybe toes. And um, if you remember, a few months ago, I had another skein of Belle that just did not knit up how I was hoping it would or how I expected. This one is knitting up exactly as I sort of imagined it would, and I am really, really happy with it. So, off to a good start on that one. Just pretty, pretty colors. Now, I have another project that's kind of taken the place of my plain stockinette socks because it's mainly garter stitch and that is my August <laughs> yarn of the month club project. So for August I pulled this beautiful skein. This is from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. I'm just seeing if I have the label in here. Oh yeah, there it is. One of her old labels, which is an indication of how long I've had it. This is the Sunshine Base, which is a 100% Merino Superwash. Um, there's about 490 yards um, of figuring weight yarn to, I think, to 100 grams. And this is the Zinnias colorway. Whereas Lisa says zinnias. I love that there are regional differences in the way that we pronounce certain words. So um, we say zinnias here. And I chose this yarn because it's summer and I have zinnias out in the garden that are all blooming now. 
got off to a little bit of a rough start, but they're doing well now. And I'll just put in a few pictures here so you can appreciate their beauty the way I have been able to. And I paired it up with this skein of um, Barocco Ultra Alpaca Fine, which is their fingering weight Ultra Alpaca. It is 50% Peruvian wool, 20% super fine alpaca, and 30% nylon. And I am knitting a shawl called Summer in the City. And it is by Danny Sunshine, which I did not think about until I was writing up show notes that the base is Sunshine and the designer's last name is Sunshine. I'm not sure if that's her real name or a design name, but I thought it was a great coincidence. And this is coming along really nicely. It's just a traditional uh, um, triangular shawl where you increase on the right side uh, at each end and in the middle up a center central spine. I haven't knit one kind of like this for a while and look how pretty it is. So these sections of garter stitch are just separated by this, um, oh that's the back side, sorry, separated by this elongated stitch. And then once you get to the bottom, I don't think you can tell very well from this pattern picture. Um, and there's some straight feather and fan lace for the border. Um, so it all ripples. I think it's gonna look really pretty. The only thing that I wish I had done differently, I keep showing you the wrong side. The only thing I wish I'd done differently is the pattern uh, it has a two row or two stitch um, border separated by a yarn over, except when it comes to the um, elongated stitch, it's just knit across the whole row. And what I'm wishing I had done is done the garter stitch and then begun this elongated stitch. I just, I'm going to guess it's going to block out. I'm sure it'll be fine. I think just in its unblocked state. It just doesn't look as nice on the edge. Uh, but I am not taking it back to change it and I'm sure it will be fine. But doesn't that look nice and fresh and bright? Um, and I have uh, white zinnias in my garden too. So um, definitely reminiscent of those beautiful bright summer flowers. So this has been a great project. Been enjoying that. And I'm keeping it in this bag that I had made with the sunflowers on it. So I thought it was all kind of went together really well. Okay, I need a sip of tea before I get into the next projects because this is where the analysis paralysis really, really, really came into play. It's gone a bit cold. Um, I have had many interruptions. I started to record, uh, I think, early afternoon, and then I've just had phone calls and um, visits at the door with uh, my son and daughter-in-law came to drop something off, and they've been on holidays, so we had lots to talk about. And so, yeah, it was just... Not, my day's not turning out quite as planned, but that's okay. Um, I have plenty of time today to um, edit and upload this once I'm done. Okay, I have two new sweater cast-ons. Hadn't intended to, just how it works out sometimes. This sweater I had intended to cast on though. It is called Owen, it is by Jennifer Wood. There's the back, and there's the front. And I have been wanting to knit this sweater for a very long time, I think ever since it came out. I have been wanting to knit a Jennifer Wood pattern for 
for a number of years now and never managed to get around to it. So this year I was determined that I was going to knit this sweater. And one of the things that's been holding me back is finding just the right yarn for it. I thought I had recently found it when I picked up, I ordered this um, Friday Harbor yarn from Cascade. This is a worsted weight yarn. Um, it's 80% merino wool and 20% silk. And I liked the way it had sort of a heathered look because of the silk. I thought the silk would add some drape to it. Um, I was very happy with my choice. The only thing is, is when I was knitting with it, with the needle that I needed to use to achieve gauge, I was just finding it really stiff. And I just was not enjoying it because of that. Um, having said that, it still looks beautiful in this yarn. You can see this cable detail here. You start at the top, work back and forth, and you have a, um, uh, this is part of a, um, a saddle sleeve that the pattern runs down the sleeve. I think there's a photo of that. Yeah, here you go. You can see. Oops. can see yeah that might be better you can see how the there's a saddle shoulder the pattern runs down the sleeve um anyway I just was like mm, I don't know about this yarn and so I left it left it in place as you can see but I went looking through my stash to see if I had something else that might be suitable and I came across this yarn, which um, I've got the label here. I bought this in Australia. Mm, I can't remember what year we were there. Not sure. Um, oh, 2013 maybe? It's been a while. I, um, this yarn is from Bendigo. Bendigo Woolen Mills. Uh, we drove up to Bendigo one day from Melbourne and uh, went to the Woolen Mills and I had a great time picking out some yarn. This is their Luxury 8 Ply and the shade is 358 Leaf. So there's, and it is a 100% wool and it is a um, superwash wool. I had cast on a sweater, knit most knit a good chunk of a sweater out of this yarn and really liked the sweater, but then I put on some weight and I didn't think it was gonna fit well and I kind of lost interest. And so when I sort of rediscovered it in my uh, chest over there, I um, thought I'd give it a go. And it actually, it's knitting up not too bad either. Um, it's definitely, drapier. You can see that cable detail. It's got a little more drape, a little more stretch. This is a DK weight as opposed to a worsted weight. The pattern does call for worsted. Um, it calls for um, Carol Feller's yarn, uh, Nua Worsted. Stolen Stitches Nua Worsted, which is a 60% wool, 20% yak, and 20% linen. Um, and it's not like there's anything wrong with this, but I kept picturing it in a yarn that had a little more interest to it, like, like a tweed or a heather. And so I was like, eh, I don't know. So I went looking some more. <laughs> it's one advantage of having a large stash. Um, 
and I pulled out this Cascade 220. Yeah, it's maybe not quite as bright as it shows on the screen, but it's pretty bright. I have had a sweater's quantity of this yarn uh, for a very long time. I bought this when I used to work at the yarn shop. Um, I originally bought it for a cabled cardigan with a hood, like a hoodie, cabled hoodie, that had been shown in kind of a pumpkin orange yarn in the um, magazine. I think it might have been Interweave. And this was like the closest I could get. And I mean, I uh, warm orange isn't good on me. So I, I actually still really like this color. It's pretty bright though. And it's tried to be several things. So I thought, well, let's try it in this sweater. It had the Heather. Oh, this is colorway, by the way. It's colorway 9444, and it's called Tangerine Heather. Um, I just realized my skein is coming undone here. So, I, <laughs> whoops. I cast it on, and all three of these, uh, mega swatches are all at to the same point so i could really take a good look at all of them now you can see that shows off the um, stitch pattern really well it's not as stiff as the uh, first one that i knit but still i was like second guessing myself about this colorway it is shown in orange but obviously not quite as bright an orange and I don't usually knit patterns in the same color they're shown in uh, once in a while I do but it's not my usual practice but anyway I just wasn't sure about it and you know when you're working on something and you're not really wanting to work on it because you're just not 100% sold on it? That's how I was feeling about all of these. So as it turned out, I had to go to my local yarn shop on Tuesday for another reason, which I will get to. And I thought that while I was there, I would look for something else that might be suitable for the sweater. And I came across this yarn. It is by Estelle Yarns. It's called Eco Tweed Worsted. It's 75% organic wool and 25% uh, cellulosic viscose. It's a worsted weight, obviously, by the um, name. Um, the colorway is Q42406 red. So it had two, three things going for it. <laughs> One, hello, it's red, my favorite color. Two, it's a tweed, a very subtle tweed though. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't, um, can't think of the right word, doesn't interfere with the st stitch pattern. That's not the word I'm looking for, but I think you know what I mean. So you can see there's very subtle flecks of blue. There's a little bit of red that shows up. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that right there. Also a little bit of just a paler color like next to that blue. So very subtle tweed. And uh, there was, um, a hat knit up in this yarn in a different color. And the salesperson uh, said, oh, one thing I should warn you about this, that yarn is she said, it um, stretched out quite a bit when I blocked it and it didn't go back. So I thought, okay, I'd better do a real, real swatch here. Cause I had not swatched for these others. I had just used the beginning of the sweater as a swatch, more or less. 
Um, actually, that's not true. I did swatch with the uh, first yarn. Anyway, I did myself up a little swatch and it actually did not grow significantly at all. In fact, it is almost identical to its original size after washing and blocking. Um, but I think it might have something to do with the gauge that it's knit at. And maybe that has, maybe that changed it. In any case, um, it's, it's got some nice drape, but it's not too drapey. And I thought, I think this one's a winner. And sure enough, like I love, 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 love how this is knitting up. Look how nice this is. You, I've actually gotten further on this one because uh, this is the one. So you can see it shows up the stitch pattern really well. Um, it doesn't obscure it. The tweed doesn't obscure the stitch pattern. There, I knew it would come to me. So yeah, it's, it's knitting up well. Um, again, it's not as stiff as the first one I knit, but it definitely has body and I know that it will drape nicely when it's done. Um, so we have a winner, but it took four attempts to get there. Sometimes that's just what happens and sometimes though it's also very worth it. So I am going to have an Owen this year uh, after all, after putting this one off for so long, um, I, <laughs> if I actually stick with it, which, which I'm definitely motivated to do, I should have this done hopefully by the end of the year, um, in time to wear in the cooler months. Uh, I may also, this sweater has, um, like three quarter length sleeves. I, We'll most likely knit them long because I can always push them up, but I can picture you wearing like a shirt under this and I would want to have the sleeves long to do that. I will probably also lengthen the body a little bit. I normally do for my long torso and um, she does indicate in the pattern where you can do that. Um, and she does mention that you can lengthen the sleeves and tells you what to do there too. So. That's my plan. So yay, happy ending. It just took a while to get there. Uh, the final work in progress that I have to show you uh, went through a similar um, process, but not as uh, prolonged and drawn out. So on Tuesday, I got an email from Lyrical Knits, Mary Annarella, and she had released this pattern. It's called the Killer Queen Pullover, and it is based on the stitch pattern that she used in her Killer Queen cowl, which I believe I bought right away, but I've never knit it. it it, I believe, calls for a DK or a worsted, and it's not yarn. I usually have just like one or two skeins lying around for something like that. Um, but I, so I, I thought that would be such a fun sweater to knit. And immediately I thought, I know what I'm gonna use is I have all these leftovers of Cascade 220 Heritage Wave that I used in my uh, shift shawl. Um, I was gonna bring it up with me and it's, I'd forgotten, so I'll put in a photo of it here. And I thought, oh, this would be so fun. I've been wanting to make the shift sweater, but it calls, I think, for a sport weight. And I thought this might be too heavy, although I think some people have used it. And I just have never gotten around to it. But I thought, oh, this would be a fun way to just use all the different color changing yarns. But I needed yarn for the background color. So um, I actually had uh, my granddaughter with me. I was looking after her that day and uh, we went to the yarn shop uh, to look for yarn. 
And originally I was thinking of either black or off-white in order to show off the colors. But what I ended up picking up instead was this um, Cascade 220 Super Wash in um, color 880, which is called Marion Berry. And for those who may not know, because I think it's fairly a fairly regional berry, uh, Marion Berries are a type of blackberry, which were um, created, <laughs> that's not the right word, propagated in Oregon. Um, named for Marion County. I only know that because I looked it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> I actually have a jar of Marion Berry jam in my fridge right now from the Oregon coast. Uh, anyway, I thought these would look really good together. So I very excitedly um, brought it home. And um, once my granddaughter left, I got stuck started on swatching. So I swatched for the Owen and then I swatched for this and I had some leftover um, super wash uh, just in an off-white and so I fiddled around with the stitch pattern because the gauge was given over the um, stitch pattern not stockinette stitch. Um, so that was good. It gave me a chance to, you know, sort of get an idea of what the stitch patterns were going to look like. And uh, when I, uh, after blocking, um, not surprisingly, this is a super wash yarn. It did relax a little bit. And I was kind of torn between two sizes because um, it has a 36 and then the next size up is a 39. And I have a yoked uh, pullover made from Cascade 220, non-superwash, um, the Hero pullover, that is 38 inches around. And that's kind of where I wanted it to be. The pattern calls for zero to three inches of positive ease. So I have an approximate 36 inch bust. Sometimes it's a little more, sometimes it's a little less, but um, I didn't want to go as high as 39 and especially being a super wash I thought if I knit the 39 and then it relaxed that would be bigger than I want so I've gone ahead and knit the 36 inch knowing or anticipating that it's going to relax a little bit and actually as I'm knitting it the first few increases um the first sorry the stitch count after the first few increases are the same for the 36 and the 39. So I'm actually even gonna look in, see if there's a way of just adjusting it to kind of make it fall in between there um, and if it would still work with the stitch pattern. But anyway, um, let me bring this in a little bit closer so you can see. So I started, so I cast on, did all the shaping and everything and got to where you add in the um, first stitch pattern. Uh, and then I was really torn with what color do I start with? How am I gonna arrange all these colors? In what order? I had two little balls left over. Was, was that gonna be enough to do like this stitch pattern? both on the body and the sleeves, because once you divide, you kind of want the sleeves and body to look somewhat similar. So I sort of was thinking I need to plan it so that I have enough yarn to do approximately the same thing on the sleeves and the body. And I tried a different couple different yarns and I was just like, really wary about it because I knew I would have enough, uh, I knew I had enough yardage with a little bit to spare, but I hadn't really thought about the fact that I had to make it work with where it was. Like I didn't wanna, you know, run out of like this yarn halfway through a stitch pattern, for example, and have to start with something completely different. 
So while I was kind of humming and hawing over that, I remembered that I had this yarn in my stash. <laughs> this is also Cascade 220 Superwash. Uh, I'm just looking for the label. Oh, uh, well, here's a skein. Um, but it is called Effects. I had bought a sweater's quantity of this plus two skeins of the gray um, a while ago. And this is the color 10 um, Lightning Storm. And it knits up like this. I had done a swatch with the intention of making a sweater. In fact, I think I had cast on the, I think it was called Payday and changed my mind. So that's what it looks like knit up. And I thought, I think these two would match. So when I put them next to each other, it's like, oh yes, those go together really well. So I decided to give it a try. And I started with the first stitch pattern and I liked the way it looked. And so I carried on. So I've now through the first stitch pattern and I'm two thirds of the way through the second one. And I think it looks really pretty. Um, I did not intend, I know I mentioned I don't usually knit things in the colors that they're shown in, and it was not my intention to knit this in purple, uh, but that's kind of what happened. And then, uh, especially with this yarn, it is different than the one that was used. Um, if you can tell this one has like peachy color and a bit of blue some yellow kind of pinky it is more variegated or multicolored. um but yeah i am ending up with something sort of like the original but i liked the original so you know that's okay um and i just think this is a better choice than my original idea uh, this is more unifying. It is a busy sweater, and so uh, this will be the same throughout. And I like how it, um, even the darkest shade in this contrast yarn is lighter than the base yarn, and so it does stand out. And the colors and shades, never sure, color, shade, tone, you know, Whatever, they are very complimentary. And so, um, yeah, I'm really happy with it so far. I used, um, actually in both sweaters, which doesn't usually happen, I've used the needles that have been suggested. That's what gave me gauge. Um, and even in the Owen sweater, even my row gauge is the same, which is very rare. Uh, this one, my row gauge is a little bit I have less rows per inch than, than um, I think it's less. Anyway, because it's a yoked sweater, you can kind of determine where you want to split it anyway, so I'm not worried about that. Um, and I used the alternating cable cast on. I really like this cast on for one by one ribbing. Uh, it looks very similar to a tubular cast on without all the hassle. So I've got a nice stretchy cast on. I'm not sure if I can put this on to any, obviously my needle's not long enough for me to stretch it out and show it to you. Um, but I think it's so pretty so far. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it take shape. Isn't that pretty? So fun, so fun. So um, yeah, that is all my um, work, well, all my uh, knitting finished projects and works in progress. And I have one more thing to show you. And that is uh, my cross stitch. So I will not be showing this every time, but I did make some significant progress on my autumn bull, bull 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Autumn Bell Pull by Stony Creek. It was in the Stony Creek August 2006 magazine. And as you can see, I always do this side. I always find it easier to go that way. Um, I have got all these sunflowers and all the vines and the leaf. And then there's um, a pumpkin over here and then some wording. So um, only one letter to do after this. So it's a definite possibility that I could have this project done for this fall, considering that it's been going for, uh, I think since 2006. Um, that's a good thing. They're pretty. I love the sunflowers. I think they're so nice. All right, I'm going to kind of uh, take a minute to kind of just declutter here because it's very distracting and I'll be back to talk about what's been going on uh, over the last three weeks. So I'll be right back. That's better. I don't know about you, but I work better in an uncluttered space. Uh, when I was going to university, I used to have to make sure my desk was all clean and organized before I would sit down to write an essay. Otherwise, I just couldn't concentrate. I also took advantage of that little break to have a bite to eat. I had planned to record, then have lunch, and then edit. But with getting uh, delayed with these various uh, disruptions, I didn't get recording till much later than planned, and I never did managed to have something to eat so I thought I better do that I was starting to to feel pretty hungry um, I also grabbed my shift shawl so I thought it'd be easier to show it to you in person rather than try and find a photo so I really like uh, these colors all together um, so I would like to use all of these leftovers in a single project uh, whether that will be a sweater uh, or not, I don't know. There's about uh, 250 grams here. In other words, about two and a half skeins worth. Um, I was thinking it might work up really well in a weaving project. So not sure, that remains to be seen. But in the meantime, I am really happy with my decision to go with uh, that other yarn for the Killer Queen pullover. I think that was the right move. Uh, speaking of other yarns and other patterns, um, have you seen the new field sweater that's just come out recently? I have not. I'll put a picture here in case you haven't. I think it's just beautiful. And um, I haven't looked too closely, but I'm pretty sure it calls for a DK yarn. And I know a lot of people are holding two strands together, a plain yarn and a strand of mohair. But I was thinking that um, it might work up really nicely in this yarn from Bendigo. I think it would set off the stitch pattern really nicely and I think it's a really nice color too. So that's a possibility, but that will not be anytime soon because I already have two sweaters on the go and that's probably one sweater too many if I'm honest. <laughs> I also finished up my tea and grabbed myself something cold to drink. Had a little bit of ice, ice in there, a little piece of ice. Snuck its way in there. So what has been going on over the past three weeks? The short answer is a lot and so I will try and keep this section as be brief as possible um, uh, just sort of hit some highlights and a couple of unfortunately low lights so um, on a happy note uh, as mentioned last episode Cameron took a week's holidays and so we spent part of that up at our family cabin um, our mom my, our mom, my mom was there with us. Um, and we just had a mostly relaxing time. Uh, we had a little incident with a mouse one day, which uh, involved some pulling things out and cleaning things up and trying to block the entrance. 
Um, we thought we had figured that out in May, but apparently not. And there was another entrance uh, in the kitchen. And in fact, we actually saw the mouse there, like looking at us. <laughs> uh, we think we have that figured out now, so fingers crossed. Uh, Cameron did a lot of reading. I didn't really knit there. I did knit on the way there and back in the car though. Um, I did some cross stitch. I worked on a jigsaw puzzle, which is not something I do very often. Um, don't know if you remember back earlier, earlier this year, I had bought a jigsaw puzzle for my mom and I had divided it up into 25 sections for her to do as an advent project. And she had decided to go ahead and make it up right away. And then she passed it to a friend and some she passed it to someone else. It's made its way through a few different people and has now come back to my mom and she brought it out to the cabin. Uh, but she found another puzzle by the same artist at her senior's yard sale. So she thought that would be a, a good thing to have out at the cabin. Um, so I decided to do it. I wasn't really thinking clearly because it was 1,200 pieces and I only had like four days. <laughs> um, so in the end, I only got it about half done. I had expected that my mom would work on it with me more, but that just didn't happen for various reasons. She was gone all of one day for um, an appointment. And so um, we thought about leaving it out on the kitchen table for others to do as they came up and then decided that probably wasn't a good idea, so we took it apart. Uh, we spent the, the time we were there uh, taking our meals and playing cards at this little bistro table that belongs outside on the deck. But that's okay, it was just us, so uh, we may do, it was fine. Um, then we went out for dinner for our anniversary the day we got back and then the following two days was Cameron's year-end ball tournament so he was happy to be able to play in that um, now that he's recovered from his surgery uh, the first day we lost the first game and then won two I think that's how it went uh, and then we lost the game on Saturday or on Sunday, which just knocked us out. So, um, well, on one hand, it would be nice to keep going and kind of win the division. On the other hand, Sunday was definitely warmer than Saturday. And I think people were mostly happy just to be one and done, as we said. Uh, we had a nice get together Saturday night. Um, at one of the team members houses uh, for barbecue. So that was a definitely a nice way to end the season. Um, I've been babysitting our granddaughter usually about once a week um, on average. Uh, been doing a lot of crafting with her this summer. At the beginning of the summer uh, I took her to the dollar store and she picked out some various crafts to do. So last week was beading which she just had a ball. She had bought a set of beads and it came with one pliers and some ju a few things of jewelry findings. And then I also had some beads that um, our daughter had actually given to me. They used to be her mother-in-laws and um, after she passed away, she passed them along to me. So I brought those out. So it's kind of fitting that um, our granddaughter could also use some stuff that came from her other grandma um, and it has some better tools in it too and some better jewelry finding so yeah she made herself a bracelet made one for her sister for her auntie uh, I made our daughter some earrings she made a matching necklace she made herself a choker wrapped them all up nice nicely to give as gifts like she just had a great time with that and then um, this week she had a paper plate craft that had uh, some pom-poms and pipe cleaners to make like a bee and then while we were at the yarn shop I spotted um, a thing for uh, French knitting or what we always called spool knitting and so I picked that up for her and um, I had not done it myself for years, so I, I 
uh, went on the internet, figure out how to get started because the instructions that came with it were not very clear. It really helped to see pictures. <laughs> And um, anyway, it got her going on that and she was having a great time. Um, apparently at home, she's also recently picked up her regular knitting. So maybe we'll make a knitter out of her yet. Uh, last, no, just this. Oh, I'm all mixed up. Last Wednesday. Yes, last Wednesday, because it wasn't last night. <laughs> last Wednesday. Uh, two of my sisters and I went and saw the Barbie movie and then went out for Appy's after. Unfortunately, our other sister that lives locally wasn't able to make it after all. Uh, so we all wore something pink. I guess that's the thing to do. And uh, it was fun. Uh, I won't give anything away. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen it by now. Um, but I mean, it wasn't the best movie I've ever seen, but it wasn't the worst, and it was just a lot of fun. I, I think they uh, did a great job with the set and the costumes and the casting, and I just loved certain little touches that they did. Um, so it was a fun night out for sure. And then the next day, here we're getting to some of the low lights. Uh, the next day we went over to Victoria just for the day and visited um, my mother-in-law. Um, our daughter came with us. So uh, Cameron's brother had let him know that um, his mom had gone through a couple of changes. She uh, lost some weight and wasn't eating much anymore and also um, just wasn't quite as engaged as she used to be. So she turned 98 in April and I think she's just winding down. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to get over for her birthday this year because of um, Cam's surgeries and because um, he was been working out of town a lot. So we thought we better go, get over and see her before too much time went, went by. So we just uh, parked and walked on the ferry and his brother met us on the other side and then gave us the use of uh, their car so we could uh, could go and see her. So we had a, had a good visit. We took her outside and uh, sat in the shade. There was a nice breeze blowing. It wasn't too hot. Um, she actually looked, looked very good, but we definitely did notice uh, the weight loss. And she's always loved her food um, especially lately like her sweets and um, it's quite funny in her later years she sort of just forget the vegetables she wants the meat and the desserts <laughs> where she used to be quite a stickler for you know eating your veggies so it's funny how how you know things change as as people grow older uh, but we had brought her um, some ice cream and she hardly touched it, which is very unusual. So um, definitely good to see her. We got some nice pictures and, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, she's 98. What do you say? Um, good long life and, you know, and it could it could keep it could go on uh her father was just shy of 101 when he passed away and he had a couple of sisters that lived into their late 90s and early 100s so um i'm not writing her off yet but just you know mentally i think we're kind of prepared that it could be could be sooner than rather than later and then um recently my brother-in-law, another brother-in-law, um, did lose his father. And so uh, I attended his celebration of life last weekend, along with um, other members of, of my family. And so they did, a, it was a very nice uh, ceremony. People who spoke, spoke very well. And I think as you always do at these types of occasions, um, got to know a little bit more about him, got to know him a little, a little better. And, um, and good to see uh, some of 
my brother-in-law's family because we've known each other now of course for years and cross now and then at family events so we always sad for the reason for coming together but it's always nice to catch up with people and then unfortunately actually just um this afternoon I learned that um, one of my cousins had passed away after he's not been well for a while um, sorry I got fuzz on here and you can probably hear I think the neighbor is weed eating hopefully that's not too loud and too annoying um, yeah it was uh, sad to learn of course um, but at least he's not suffering anymore he's had a, a hard last few years so that's not so good and then I also learned that um, another cousin's husband's has suffered an accident and is in a lot of pain although he is expected it's not life-threatening but he's gonna have a tough go of it for a while too so not very good news uh, to to start my afternoon um, Cameron is away, he's been away all week. Um, he returns Saturday night um, after work, but then the good news is, is that they've hired somebody who will begin work on Monday. And it's actually someone who used to work at that store. So he's very familiar with the store and the customers and all of that. He's just gonna have to uh, learn their new computer system. So that is a relief. Uh, the end is in sight. Um, Cameron will probably have to work out of town um, a little bit more in September when his manager takes holidays again. She's on holidays this week, that's why he's up there. Um, but I might even go with him for a few days. So we'll see, that remains to be seen. But um, yeah, light at the end of the tunnel. And that brings us to something good. So my something good for this week is yesterday, I gave myself the day off. <laughs> now, I don't work outside the home and haven't for a while now. But as any of you who, who are retired know, you still have lots of things you have to do. Um, and so I don't ever, unless Cameron's home and we're having a day off together, like I don't ever feel like I can sit in it all day. There's always something that, that needs to be done. But yesterday I got up in the morning and I knit all day. Um, I had leftovers for dinner, so I didn't even have to make supper. I just had to warm it up in the microwave. Um, you know, a few odd things like some dishes that had to be cleaned up. You know, there's always something. But in general, I just had a long, lazy day all by myself, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, you can see how much progress I made on my two sweaters that I started, and... Um, yeah, it was, it was just great. I, I just enjoyed it so much. Um, so yes, that's my something good. I think that's it for this episode. I think that's enough, don't you? <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how long this episode's gonna turn out to be, but I've seen some of the timestamps on the segments I've recorded, and I know it's gonna be a long one. Uh, plus, I can hear my neighbor has switched from weed eating to mowing the lawn, and so you can probably hear that too. Uh, not to mention that I just had to delete some things off of my iPhone because the storage was full. All of those things point to the fact that it's time to bring this episode to a close. I never think to say this, but um, if you like this content, please do like and subscribe so that it can help other people find my channel. Um, have yourselves a wonderful week. I'm hoping to record again in a week's time. We'll see how it goes. Uh, take care until then. I hope to see you again very soon. Bye for now.